So we'll start this new year, new spiritual conference on the spiritual life. And this year I would like to speak about the main virtues that Christians need to have to save their soul. Last year we contemplate the mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this year I would like to move towards a little bit more what we have to do. But once again, because of God, because of our Lord Jesus Christ, never he is always the light, the inspiration, the motivation, and also the one who pushes us to act virtuously. The first virtue is virtue of faith. It's the beginning. When a child is baptized, the first thing the priest asks the godparents as the child is still outside the church, what do you ask from the church of God? And the answer is faith. What does faith bring you? Eternal life. The sacraments are things that we receive punctually, especially baptism. We receive only once in our life, but there are things that we can meditate about that. We can see this child who is pagan, doesn't have the grace, doesn't have the faith, receives through baptism the infused virtue of faith, and if he keeps the faith, he will have eternal life. But what does that mean, keeping the faith? Something today we we hear about, I have to keep the faith, it's difficult to keep the faith, many people are losing their faith, but we know that faith alone is not enough. We have to link faith with charity. The motto of Archbishop de Vey was credidimus caritati. We have believed in the charity of God for us, and therefore we have acted upon it. So faith, the beginning, the foundation of our spiritual life. St. Paul, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those phrases we know, we hear, faith brings eternal life, without faith is impossible to please God, but they must really have an influence in our life. Yes, if you look at our Lord, his life, when he will perform certain miracles, he will ask first, do you believe? And uh, sometimes the faith of those who were asking for miracles was very weak. And uh, some of them ask, increase my faith, and so on. And our Lord asked that as a condition. Yes, you know, the blind man, do you believe in the Messiah? Who is the Messiah? He it is who speaks with thee. And the man said, I believe. He fell down, worship God, worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord asked for the faith, all the miracles that he performed are meant to bring faith on earth and that salvation, not firstly of the body, but salvation of souls, will be proud. When we, we say, I do have the faith, but uh, what is exactly to have the faith is, we know, to have the creed. And what is the creed? Creed, very often we think about that's a prayer that lists all the things that I need to believe and to be Catholic, to be on my way to heaven. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and the Trinity, and Jesus Christ, and his coming, and his incarnation, his passion, and so on. It's not something uh, like a list of uh, Call list that things that don't move, because God is still God, is still Almighty. The Trinity is still living. It is true that if the mystery of the incarnation and redemption happened in time and they are commemorated in the creed, they are still mysteries that are working. Because I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church. That's a present reality, and the Holy Ghost working infusing the merits of the passion and birth and passion of our Lord into the church, the Catholic Church, the remission of sins, the forgiveness of sin that happens each time someone is forgiven, mainly by the sacrament of penance, baptism also. And anyway, this is a living reality. And 
if you, it's also a future reality, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. You see here the whole from, we could not even say from the beginning to the end because it's start, start. I, I believe in the eternity of God and I finish by listing the eternal life. So this is a whole plan of salvation. It's so let us, when we pray, let us admire the plan of our Lord. Archbishop Lefebvre said, it's the song of the love of God for us. Yes, we see all the different proofs of the love of God for us. So we should be eager to know this mystery, the resurrection of our Lord. When we see so many people attacking and denying this uh, these mysteries and the resurrection and incarnation, the Holy Catholic Church, the mystery of the Church, which is also a mystery for, for our faith, especially today when we see the Church so disfigured. How is it possible? Let us go to the Passion when we see our Lord disfigured on the cross. Many people said, Oh, he cannot be the Messiah. And sometimes we are tempted to say the same that cannot be the Church when we see all this scandals and this lack of faith, but we have to precisely to, to remember this mystery, to ponder about them. Because if not, the first uh, temptation or the first scandal, we give up everything. So we have to continue to sing uh, along the, the song of the love of God for us. St. Augustine has this beautiful word, when we see the love of God for us, we should be prompted to love him back. So if we ponder a little bit, what is faith? Faith is first the submission of our intellect to the truth revealed by the authority of God. It's an act of obedience, an act of humility, an act of submission. We are in a world of pride. If I don't understand, if I am not explain everything, I will not believe. Even some Catholics, sometimes, sometimes some people, a Catholic is one you receive. And to, to require a full understanding is something that is um, not reasonable. You know, we, when we see Adam and Eve, God gave them an order and they didn't fully understand why but he gave them an order and he has them obedience. But pride pushed them to be because he wanted to be like God. And we found it very unreasonable that a creature who just been created from the slime of the earth would want to be like his creature. Lucifer did the same. It's unreasonable, but it's us. When we want, we are puzzles. It's normal that we don't fully understand. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that it's not certain. Why? It relies on God's authority. God cannot be mistaken. God cannot be wrong. So if he reveals something, we have to believe. We have to accept the word of God such as he gives it. Such as has been transmitted by the church and the church using its infallibility. Yes, when the church published the first creed, and uh, first, and then had a few things, developed more, it will be more precise to say, a few things that was to help people to keep the faith. And people who questioned, who doubt, to deny, became heretic. Heretic means to choose. They start choosing, oh, I don't like that, I don't understand that, I am going to say the opposite, or things differently. It's very, we, um, we are so, after so much centuries of revolution, liberalism, rationalism, where man is in the center and God is on the side, it's extremely difficult for us to accept the faith. So let us simply make acts of faith. I do believe. I don't understand fully, but I do believe. Make acts of faith, like for example, when we... Um, when we go to Mass, faith in the Blessed Sacrament, when we make a genuflection, I do believe God is truly, substantially present in the tabernacle. Yes. And it's still 
avail. It's, it's a certain knowledge, because God is God, God is truth, but as we see it now, it's still uh, under a veil. Yes, we don't see things. We know what we have to believe. We know that if we don't believe, we are out. But when you try to ponder about the mysteries, we are um, obliged to say that we don't fully understand. Trinity, three persons in one nature for us, who I don't understand. But God revealed the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, one God in three persons. So we do, we do uh, accept, because it's God who speaks. And we know it's good to not understand, because it must, must make us eager to go to heaven. Because in heaven, we know faith, will, we will lose the faith in heaven. Yes, we will lose the faith. It's surprising to hear that, because we will see. We will, the faith will blossom into the vision of God. So therefore, there will be no necessity to believe because we actually see it. So the vision of God, the vision of the Holy Trinity, the vision of the attribute of God. God sometimes is infinitely just and infinitely merciful. How does it go together? How can we say that God will let people go to hell, people who choose to deny him, is still infinitely merciful. All these things that for us, it's a bit difficult to reconciliate because we are small creatures. We will see his infinite power and all the things he did and so on, all the things that he could have done and so on. All the things that are questioned for us today will be revealed to us and we will see God face to face. Do we think about that enough? We are meant to see God face to face. And uh, that's something that if we would um, think about that every morning, we will not complain. We will do our duty and we will run into heaven. But we have a heavy feet and very often we are uh, slow. That's why we have to enter into this world which is real. In spite of the veil, we have to live according to God, because that's the only reality. How many people are living in illusion? They forget about God. They spend a the whole day without thinking about God. They complain, they focus, they put all their energy for a small thing, for things of not great importance, and they put completely aside their salvation. Yes. It is horrible to think that a person can spend his whole life in error, in the most total illusion, in ignorance of the most important things that are to be known. So we see people who don't have the faith who forget about God, but it doesn't mean we are exempt, preserved from this uh, illusion, especially in the time we live. Where faith, because today we cannot speak about faith without mentioning the loss of faith. Yes. So. In the past, when you live in a world where everyone, majority of people, have the faith, it was less a responsibility, personal responsibility, to keep the faith because you were prompted. The society, the family was leading us towards, towards God. But today, unfortunately, it's not the case. And so we need to live more, I told you, to live more in this world of reality, what we call the spirit of faith. To see things with faith. What does that mean? It means simply to see God, to see things as Jesus Christ sees them. That's to live according to our faith. To see things, event, persons, as Christ sees them. Sees them now. When we see the world, the power of the world princes of this world, the, yes, these powerful men, these uh, laws that they are putting in place that are against Christ, this persecution about the church and so on. What does Christ see that? He sees wind. He sees illusion. He sees things that pass. He thinks things that are powerless in front of God. He will say a word and they will just 
go away like the wind. How does Christ see a sin? You know, if we happen to break something that we like or to crash our car and so on by accident, it's a big event, big trauma. And then we, have, we are not traumatized when we eagerly criticize our neighbor. But how does Christ see the car accidents? Just an accident that little cross sin in our life, but there is no sin involved, therefore it's nothing for Christ and can be a good action by accepting God's will. And while a sin, he sees an offense to God, to his father. Little critics here, little act of lack of charity. When he sees the church, he sees the church as the continuity of his redemption when he sees a priest, when he sees a little sacrifice, when he sees the souls, the soul of a child. Let us see things that shouldn't be baptized, so pure and so on. Let us see things as Christ sees them. Always remembering this world is meant to pass. We will go in the eternal life. We have to live in this atmosphere. Because if not, we'll fall into despair. Oh, it's bad, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse. But Christ is still Christ. Fear not, little flock. The Blessed Mother always saw that uh, the events of life, even when our Lord seemed to rebuke her when they said they have no more wine, uh, our Lord seemed to say no. But she has the faith in her son. Do whatever he tells you to do. She knows that he's going to do something, but she doesn't fully understand. When she found the Christ in temple, it is said they did not understand. That doesn't mean she questioned Christ. She asked the Archangel Gabriel to come back and to explain more about her mission. No, she accepted. So let us be grateful to have the faith and live according to the spirit of faith, yes. It's a tragedy because the church is supposed to transmit the faith, to have handed down the faith. When we think about the creed that we sing or that we pray at Mass, the prayer that comes from the first centuries of the church, when the concern of the church to make sure that people will know what they have to believe and, and so on, and the protection of the faith, the building of all the church and you have all the congregations in Rome, you know, the one for the defense of the faith called the Holy Office. We had the one for the propagation of the faith, all the missionaries. When we think how many missionaries went, nothing has done for transmit the faith, a living faith, faith and charity in the world. And today it seems that very few people are really concerned about that. Seem even that some church members are ashamed. They say, oh, no, we cannot. We just express or witness, but we, don't, we are not missionary anymore, and so on. It's a tragedy because they have misunderstood the faith. The faith they think the faith is something you can choose. It's the faith that comes from sentiment more than reception, obedience, humility, like I told you before. Yes, if I don't like that, it's, each one can make his own faith if you want. I believe that God is one. I believe that God is one but three in persons. You believe that, I believe that, we are opposed, but we are not going to speak about that. Well, if our Lord is in three persons, if God is in three persons, the one who denies it doesn't have the faith, so therefore cannot really save his soul. And the desire of a missionary will be to help him to save his soul. So we have to be um, strong in our faith. And it would be give us peace for spiritual life. But if faith doesn't change, so we'll participate in a certain, in certain way on the immutability of Christ, immutability of God, who doesn't change, should strengthen. Always remember that has been the end out, and it will lead us end out from the beginning of the church, and it will be lead us to eternal life.
it's not easy. Our Lord showed us the way, it was the way of the cross. We have to combat to keep the faith. Persecution from our own temptation, our own doubts, and persecution in the world that really want to make the faith an experience, a personal experience, but which is more in the imaginary world than in a real world. And uh, therefore, that's your imagination. My imagination says the opposite. We cannot, we cannot convince or convert each other. So let us simply remember that Our Lady, she's seen as the queen of martyrs, queen of those who die for their faith. She suffered because of her faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. She suffered right next to the cross. So let us be surprised that we will have to suffer to keep the faith. The day of the confirmation, the bishop gives a little slap to tell the confirmants, the one who received confirmation, do not believe that to have the faith is easy. It gives you a lot great peace, great conviction, great strength, but in the world which is opposed to the faith, you will have to carry your cross. But do not fear. Yes, for example, Our Lady, she's called, the, she crushes all heresies, all errors. So let us not be uh, afraid when we see all these lies, all these errors, all these things being spread. Let us always remember that Our Lady will crush these heresies as she will crush the head of Satan. St. Pius X being our patron, let us simply look what we have on this feast day. O God, who has filled St. Pius X, Supreme Pontiff, with strength and wisdom in order to defend the faith. Yes, God chose St. Pius X in order to defend the faith. So let us go to him. He was given certain lights to see all the errors that will spread unfortunately, into the church. And he was strong. At the same time, he was a very charitable pope, but very strong and firm. So it's a model for us um, to keep the faith few, pure. Fidelity, you know, all this world, faithful, faith, fidelity, they all have the same roots, faith. It's um, something we want to be found with Imagine that's also a great encouragement for us. Well done, faithful servant. The word that if we follow our Lord, we will hear when we die. Well done, faithful servant. Faithful because you kept the faith. It's not just because you, you did your duty. You kept the faith. You persevere in the faith. And not a dead faith like someone who is not in state of grace but still believed. No, a living faith. A faith that acts, that is full of acts of charity, a lifelong of fidelity. When we see someone who died, was faithful throughout life's life, we are admiring.